If you were to look up the definition of paradise, I feel as though you really would see a picture of Namotu. Hello, Finn, right here, guys. Big fish. And fall asleep, wake up in tropical paradise. That's my kind of trip. Thank you for choosing to fly Fiji Airways together with a coach and partner. Here I am in Fiji. Oh, right on the boat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. With a long list of species to check off. Lot. Oh, there he is. Again, they're eating it underwater. My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the Just world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Maltz. I got you, what you saying? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the three on the town tuna. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. That's the one. He's not superstitious, because that's bad luck. Woo. All right, get with him. Come with him. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. So Fiji's been on my radar for three, four years, you know, mostly through social media. There's a couple of guys that I know that fish over here, you know, put reports up on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, and it really picked my interest a few years ago. A huge bucket list trip for me was the South Pacific. And honestly, I didn't know if I was ever gonna make it here. How you doing? Ben, how are you, man? Good to, Rush. You guys. Good to meet you, man. Yeah. Stoked you guys made it. Yeah, so we're on Namotu Island in Fiji. In Fiji is in the South Pacific. It's about a three hour flight from Australia and about a 10 hour flight from the west coast of the US. We've been catching some big uh, tuna, so we're having really good sashimi stuff. You know, Fiji is really known as a surf destination. In fact, how I originally kind of heard about the fishing over here was I have a lot of buddies who have come over here and surf these legendary breaks. You know, thinking about Fiji, you think about the surf, you think about the crystal clear blue water, you think about the incredible reefs, how vibrant they are and how many different species of fish they have. Nothing really does it justice unless you really come here and see it for yourself. Well, did you ever think you'd be fishing in Fiji? Nope. Another dream I mean, come true. I mean, like such Silly. freaking farce. And then you've seen all the like the surfing magazine and you've seen all the pictures and you look out and it's exactly yeah, what, what you, you saw in magazines. It was. Or Geographically, Fiji is just set up in a perfect place. It's basically an atoll in the middle of the South Pacific. All the islands, they are literally rocks in the middle of the ocean. And that's what makes it so unique. You know, you have deep, deep water all around it coming up onto these shallow reefs and rocks. You look at a map water. and figure out where you're at, it's like, it's oh, pretty just mind on the plane, Just watching this, coming from the west coast all the way to these little tiny islands in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, so we have an amazing tuna fishery here in Fiji, especially out the front of where Namotu Island is. And the reason why we have um, such incredible fish here is because they're all migrating fish okay so they're going from one point to another and they stop here during that migration to feed up and get fat so they can go to their next destination so i brought four heavy setups two 50s two 30s then i brought two heavier bait rods like those heavy carnage with uh, 30 and 40 size smaller reels if that doesn't get it done, we're in trouble. But according to Ben, it sounds like we gotta be ready for everything at all times, like. Yeah, pretty rare to get all the different styles of fishing, whether that's bait fishing, jig fishing, popper fishing, offshore trolling, you know, offshore casting, you know, poppers and that kind of stuff in one place. From where I'm sitting right here, all of those are on tap within a three mile ring. I think the coolest thing that's gonna happen here, man, like I got a little exposure to it in Australia, but once we get up and start doing that reef stuff, 
and every cast is a different fish you've never seen in your life. That's gonna be awesome. Oh, man. dude, and it just pretty big too, right? I mean, anywhere from this to well, I mean, you could catch a hundred pound GT in ten feet of water. Coming here, I was really stoked. I wanted Rush to just get a taste of what I saw when I went to Australia. Terrain-wise, and the way you're gonna fish here, the fishing style, and the bottom you're gonna fish over, and the techniques you're gonna employ, as close to the same as you can imagine. And in this crystal clear water, I guess you see everything. You, just see, you see, like a lot of that times, you, if the sun's right, you know, you'll just see dark spots come charging in on your Nomad. From a fishing perspective, Fiji really has everything to offer. From inshore reef fishing, the phenomenal offshore fishing. I mean, if you want a legitimate shot at catching a big billfish, if you want a legitimate shot at catching tunas, if you want to stay inshore and throw poppers all day, it has everything to offer. Local knowledge is brought to you by Evinrude. Penn, let the battle begin. Yeti. Built for the wild. Sea Keeper. Once you feel it, you'll never boat without it. Seaguar, the inventor and perfecter of fluorocarbon fishing lines. Bubba, the ultimate lifestyle. Nomad Design, crafted by experience. And by BDOutdoors.com. Yeah, let's go that DTX straight on that. Ali and I both love tuna fishing, but there's a certain type of tuna that you don't get to see too often. I know a little bit about this tuna fishery here through friends, and what I do know is, is there's a lot of them. They've got really cool sickle fins, and you get to fish it alone. Fiji is host to one of the tunas we love to chase, the yellowfin tuna particularly the one with the big Allison fins. It's just a different looking, different type of yellowfin tuna, and they're just absolutely gorgeous. So what are you looking for, bird piles to go run on? Or? Yeah, so just sort of driving a, a couple of miles at a time, and then just really having a look around in the area, and I'm looking for you know, some type of feature, you know, whether it's birds or you know, maybe a current line or some weed or something like that. Our tuna fishery here at Nomotu um, is really driven by the sea surface temps. So that's the first thing I look at, okay? Where is the good water? Where do I think the bait is gonna be holding? Oh, I just saw it turn over here, flash and hit the water. So I go to that point and then we do a lot of glassing, you know, with gyros. From that point, I'm starting to look for birds, current lines, you know, like any little features out there that is gonna give me some information to tell me that there's tuna there. We're going this way, which is south from the island. All the birds are kind of congregating this way. Sort of looks good on the sea surface uh, temps as well, so. Tuna fishing is tuna fishing is tuna fishing. Everybody's got their own little take on it, but for the most part, it's a very visual type of fishing. Look at this over here now, it's foaming hard on the other side. Is that skipjack? That's, little that's, that's skipjack right there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And look at this bait. The bait is thick. Typically, you know, what happens here is the skipjacks bring all the bait up to the surface and they start foaming and that's when the bigger yellowfin come, in, come around on the outskirts and just start pumping the skipjack. When we're out here cruising around, we're looking for birds primarily. Like birds give away the position of the fish. And those birds don't even have to be flying or diving. I mean, they are a telltale sign. Whether they're rafted up, whether they're in the sky, whether they're diving, birds are your telltale sign. Yellowfin right here, guys. You'll get a shot here. Okay, Rush, I'm gonna take the boat out of gear, so it's all you now, bro. Oh, look at the yellow fin jumping fish. right there. Big yep. fish. You saw a big fish? That was a schoolie right there. I saw. No, I saw big I, fish on the surface rolling. I got a hit as well. Damn. Ooh, this one's dumping. <laughs> look at that. Oh, what? Oh, oh, keep it oh. going. You know, when you are tuna fishing, there's really a couple of different ways you're gonna catch them on the same stop. Oh, he's on it. Oh my God. Oh, right in the boat. Get another cast out. I didn't want to pick it up. He was so high. We're gonna roll into a school of tuna again, pretty much anywhere in the world. We're typically dragging something behind the boat and then we're gonna have 
some kind of other offering for the fish, throwing lures at these fish. Which, you got the right kind there, Rechi? Oh, I'm just looking at this foam, bro. I don't know how big it is, but. Oh, God, they keep missing. That was a smaller fish. Yeah, on the out small. Oh, got, oh, there he is. You got him? Yeah, small guy. That was a little guy, huh? Dang, that first one was not little. That was like yeah, one. Yeah, that was a proper one, 150 eh? class. Love catching tuna on top water. That's one of the most exciting ways to catch them. Oh, I just lost him. That's fine. Ooh, this feels like a good one now. Yeah, it's a good right fish, guy. that one. Woo, come look at that. Okay, Rush, I'm with you now, so you just tell me what you need. No, I'm good right here. And once we get into them, I'm huge about top water uh, casting for these fish. I love fishing for them with stick baits and poppers. It's such an amazing sight to see them explode on, um, you know, your top water. I'm it. Oh, off. Again, on again. Again, they're eating it underwater. Totally tail hook, look at the tip. Oh, you can beat me to death. Oh, perfect. No. Oh, he's tail wrapped. Broke off. This is good fish, hey? Feels like it. Yeah. Getting some now? Yeah. That rod looks good on that bigger fish. Tip's dumped, bending, but. Um, it feels good. He dumped some line. Oh, yeah, that's real. That's a hunter something. It's only a matter of time on this pile, hey? You could just see. Uh, you could tell that's something so was going to happen. Bait. And we never marked a fish. First opportunity that I had to come to Nomotu was I was in a really unique situation because I just finished my chef's apprenticeship. You still got a fair bit of line out, too, Oh, eh? yeah, he dumped it uh, on that <laughs> second run. I was trying to figure out how I could travel the world, and I figured if I became a chef, because I was really into cooking, that I'd be able to travel anywhere and cook and get a job. Dude, you could rail them up here if you need to. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind. No, I mean, once you get them straight up and down a little more, just he, come up here and rail straight them. up and down. Do it right here. One of my dad's best friends had just started this resort, and he was trying to figure out, you know, how he wanted it set up and how it was all going to work, and, and he knew that I was really into fishing, and he was like, hey, do you want to cruise over to this resort I got in Fiji? It's just on this little island and set up our fishing program. Whew. How's that? Oh, much better. You're welcome. So I jumped on a plane, and the plan was to come over here for a month, and I left four years later. I got here, and it was just like, oh my god, everything that I love to do is right at my fingertips. Incredible, just being, you know, like a part of this whole thing coming together. Oh my god, so much better. <laughs> <laughs> You're turning into a West Coast kook, my oh friend. Oh my god. Is my hat flat enough? Not yet. Well, you're the one wearing flat brims. I like them. That's got good drag on it, too. I bumped it up. It was a little. Yeah, just go straight to strike. It's like 20 something pounds at strike. He's not taking anymore, right? You're slipping. Nah, up. I'm okay for right now. Yeah, just. Well, he woke up, huh? You're at 60 meters right now. 182 on the sounder. That's like three cranks on the rod handle. Coming okay. straight up. Now you're at 45. Coming straight up. You just saw the sharks. Yeah. They will get freaky if they see a shark. We're gonna need to leader him. Whoa, get that tight, get that keep tight. Keep that tight, keep that tight. You want me to leader him or? Are you around? Are you back around? Okay, now you get a shot. Nicely done. Uh, I'm not that good. Get another yeah. one in him. Kind of went under the hill. On the rail. Look at that. I was just bring him so in real cool. slow and set him down. Look how lit up those freaking. Heads up, guys. Come on. Okay, ready? Right right behind you, Ben. Yep. <sighs> Oh, yeah. yeah, sick fish, man. Nice, nice way to start. Nice, it. nice way to start the trip, eh? Hey? Oh, for sure. It's amazing. First fish Good of the job. trip. After we catch fish, a lot of times we like to dissect them. You can tell a lot about a fish, kind of where it's been, what it's been doing, just by looking at it. So cool. Look at those sickles, dude. I'm jealous. Those are bigger than yeah, Louisiana. Yeah, we get it. Uh, no, those are super Remember long. Remember that like one on I caught in Louisiana was bigger than that, and he didn't have half the sickles. The 50 kilo ones, the yeah. sickles are already going back past. So the sick. Yeah, these tuna, for example, you can tell most of them they're they're traveling fish. They're on the move constantly, looking for food. They're going from one place to another. The coolest man. So we caught good. Them from two pounds to 300 pounds. Local Knowledge is brought to you by CV Boats. Lead the way. 
Costa. See what's out there. Mustad, the standard in salt water. AFCO, any fish, any water. Sea Deck, your boat deserves Sea Deck. JL Audio, how we play. Casa Vieja Lodge, experience five-star angling in tropical Guatemala. The Saltwater Angler, Key West, and by Taco Marine. All right, Ben, so time to switch gears here, right? What are we gonna do next? Yeah, we've got an amazing looking day out here. We've got some great marlin opportunity with, uh, you know, hopefully some bycatch on maybe some wahoo or mahi-mahi. When you look at really good world-class fishermen, and we've been fortunate enough to fish with a lot of them, there's a few things that really stick out about these guys. We're gonna go a little bit wider than what we have been going, and just look around, I've already spotted a few birds and a little bit of activity, so we're gonna get started here, and. Just give it a go. Pretty much standard offshore trolling program, drag some lures around on the outriggers and that stuff. And I think Benny is definitely one of those guys. You know, he's charging hard, he's always got the positive attitude. I think of myself as more of a scientific fisherman. Yeah, we're gonna use some artificial lures and then we're gonna also rig some gar. Benny fishes with his gut, man. And uh, there's a lot to be said for that. You spend as many days on the water as he does, you kinda get a feel for things and you kinda know when it's gonna happen and you kinda know when it's not gonna happen. As soon as Ben recommended, you know, going wide, going offshore again, I, I thought in my head personally, that's a, that's a great idea. We're marlin fishing, now all we need to do is just sit back and relax. We had seen good signs of life. We had seen a lot of bait offshore. We kind of knew that there was a good opportunity out there to make something special happen. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, man, oh, man. All right. Oh, you get it, you get it. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. It was pretty accurate. They'll take a line. Got a lot of line out. Are we going to turn on them? Yep. Just getting these guys sorted. I'm going to back off now, OK? So it's just going to be you and the fish. Gotcha. Whenever I leave the island, I'm ready to go for any style of fishing. You know, whether it's top water, jigging, tuna, whatever it is. I might have an idea in my head of what I want to go and do that day. But you always need to let the day dictate exactly what you're going to do. And you need to be open to try everything. Nothing better than a screaming reel to get Oh my god, alive. it's the best sound in the world. <laughs> Ooh, that thing took some lines. Oh yeah, he smoked it. Now, will you get followers, like a bull and a cow, or is it a lot of singles? Um, yeah, like this area that we've seen had a lot of birds going, and I could see occasional little bust up and stuff like that, so I would suspect that there's more fish here. So I'll move through spots, I'll try different types of fisheries and see what's going on, and by reading the conditions, you know, the tides and all the little intricate details within will help me decide on, on what we're going to do. Go ahead, big boy. Just wear yourself out. Your best case scenario with these fish is they jump all their energy out. Oh, they look so good in the water, hey? Oh, they're the coolest fish, man. Everybody loves mahi. Look at them down there. These things just never get old, man. And in this crystal clear water. Yep, yep, yep. They're such an awesome fish. Such an awesome fish. Oh my God, that was the most cooperative yeah. mahi ever. <laughs> yes. Look at look that at cookie how pretty he is. Man, that's one of our favorites, Rutch. Oh, look at that guy. He's leaking a little, I apologize. So pretty. So man, look rad. At that All day, yeah. every day, twice All day on long, Tuesday. When we're marlin fishing, I'll be happy with this. Look at his lips yeah. right now, how blue his lips are. Oh, it's changing right in front of the camera. All oh, right, you want to get this guy in the box? Oh, look, get back it's like after stuck it? up like, like right oh, now. No oh, he's so lit up right now. Look, look at that. that. Look at the collar. And this other side, he's a completely different fish. That is cool. They are the best. The best. Box them? Do they eat okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, after a couple of days here at Namotu, I don't know how we could have gotten off to a much better start. We're bit, we're bit, we're bit! Really, you know, two days in, we haven't even done the stuff that I really want to show Rush. Same lure there, boys. Yeah. Remember when we were looking at the lures? You're like, which one do you want? Yeah. Pink well, that, for the mahi. That one I put in, in my spread every time I've caught. We all yellow always, fin, marlin. Yeah. You know, we you know always, how you just have one of those lures? Another dodo. 
Yes, sir. Looks like about the same size. If our Marlin I mean, trip turned into a Dorado trip, you're not going to hear either of us complain. At all. You know, I love them. Just smoke that lure both times. Especially being in a place where they're the average size is like, yeah. you know, 15. A, a real one. What we call slammers. Is that a cow? Don't know. Yeah, a tail. Might be. Here I am in Fiji, sitting in one of the most beautiful places on Earth with a long list of species to check off the, the rest of the week. These colors just never get old. Okay, you ready? Okay, okay. Get. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about there. Look at that mouth. Man, man yeah. let's get this thing in the box and let's go find us at Marlin. We're having a great day. Yeah. We've got several days left, and we've got a punch list of stuff to do, and we're fired up to get out there. 